Okay, so today we're going to be looking at Synfig Studio, which is a free and open source 2D animation software program. It's similar to uh, Adobe Flash, which allows you to make 2D animations and has some aspects of Adobe After Effects. But the difference between Synfig Studio and those programs is Synfig Studio is free, and it's open source, and it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it's a very versatile program and it it's a great resource for making quality 2D animations without paying a dime. So if you look at the arrangement I have here, it's not the default arrangement when you install the application. I've actually tweaked it a little bit and the way you do that is you grab the little icons at the top of each panel and you actually drag them, you click and drag and, and drop them into these little squares um, that are at the top right of each panel. So, for example, if I wanted this toolbox uh, panel right here to move to the right side of this panel here, I would drop it on the right square in this top right corner here, and, and that would happen. So, I've done that already, and this is the layout I have. So, I just want to go through some of the panels to get you an to give you an idea of um, of how the program works. And so, in the top left, I've put the keyframes panel, and this is where you make new keyframes for an animation, and these will show up down here in the time track panel. So, the time track down here is basically your timeline for the animation that you're going to be making. And by default, it gives you five seconds to make an animation. You can change that, but um, that those five seconds are are represented here. And... Which, what we're going to be doing is putting keyframes in this timeline. And basically those are uh, vertical lines that represent points in our animation that we can, that we can edit and use as references when, when we're building an animation. And there's actually a time cursor here. You can see this, this yellow line right here that's going back and forth that is it's a vertical line that shows what frame you're currently at so we'll get to that once we start building an application but that's the timeline time track panel to the left of the time track panel I've put the parameters panel and this is where all the parameters of the layers you create are edited and the layout of the parameters panel is quite simple it's basically a table and we'll see that once we start adding objects into the the application here they will show up in our layers hierarchy which is a panel over to the right here and the layers dialog allows you to view and manipulate the layer hierarchy in in the scene so when we add objects it's going to be an object is going to be seen in the layer panel here and when we have an object selected over here you're actually going to see the parameters over here and when we start animating it you're going to see you know different points in the time track um, along our 2D animation um, playback. Um, it, it'll start to make sense once I, once I get into it. Um, so whenever you make a keyframe, it's going to show up here. So all these all these windows are interconnected. And of course, I haven't mentioned, but this this is this main section in the center here is our canvas panel. And this is what's going to display our composition and allows direct it allows direct editing of it. I've explained a lot. Let me just show you how it actually works. I want to show you quickly how to make a an animated circle. And so what I'm going to do first is insert a rectangle. So I'm going to go over to the rectangle tool here and click on it. And I'm going to check over here. This is another panel. I'm not sure what they call this one in the top right, but it, basically it gives you toolbox um, options. And so it gives you different options that you have available dif uh, depending upon the tool that is selected. So right now we've selected the rectangle tool. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to take off this create an outline layer and just leave the create a rectangle layer option selected. So now when I draw a rectangle, it's just going to create and fill a rectangle. And it should be green, it looks like, because this is the top color here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag and draw a little rectangle. Okay, I was wrong. It's actually the bottom color that shows, so it's a black rectangle. And this is going to serve as our background. 
So if I want to make it bigger, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the, they call it the transform tool, but it's actually, it's more like the selection tool. Click on that and I'm going to drag the green arrow up here, or the green uh, dot over on the corner and make, make the rectangle bigger. Okay, and using these same strategy, I'm going to make a circle. And if you notice down here, when I created a rectangle, it showed up down here in the layers panel. Okay, this is our rectangle layer. You can change the name of it if you want um, by just right clicking and clicking. Let's see. Hmm. Maybe you just click it and click it again. Okay, so you just click and just give it a single click after you click it. And we'll call it rectangle. Okay. And if you see over here, these are the parameters of the rectangle. So if I wanted to change the color, I could just double click on this little box here and maybe pick a green color like I originally intended. There, yeah, look at it. It's a nice matrix looking green rectangle. I like that. So, um, so yeah. And we only have one keyframe. There, there really isn't anything going on. If you hit play on the animation, nothing's going to happen. It's just uh, nothing's changing. There's no keyframes. I'm going to bring that back. Okay. Now, let's add in a circle. So I'm going to click on the circle tool. Same thing. I'm going to look over here. And it has an outline, create an outline layer button checked. I'm going to click on the create a circle layer button and uncheck the... Um, create an outline layer button and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a circle now it should be black because this this square down here is black so I'm gonna go ahead and create a circle and look at that you can see it created a circle layer down here and and I can move the circle around if I if I click the green circle and usually when you insert an object into the canvas you can actually move it around with the green dot, wherever that may be. Um, now I'm going to make this circle a little smaller using another tool called the scale tool, which is right here. And I'm going to just go ahead and I should be able to just drag on the side of it, make it a little bit smaller. Okay. Grab the selecting tool and move it a little bit. Okay. Now what I want to do is have this circle animate to where it just moves to the side. And the cool thing about Synfig is when you make a change, when it's set up properly, it will fill in all the in-between. So what, what, essentially what we're going to do is start the circle here, and then I'm just going to move it like this. And Synfig will, Synfig will animate the transition from here to here, nice and smoothly. So let me show you what I mean. So we have a keyframe already at the beginning, right here, zero seconds. I want the circle to move to the right here at let's say around three three minutes or three seconds rather all right so I'm gonna put the timeline down there and I'm just gonna hit the plus sign in the keyframe panel okay and you can see now there's a little line right here that's keyframe now you can go back and forth between the keyframes by clicking up here where it says JMP this is you know jump you're gonna jump to the keyframe so I jumped to zero and now I'm gonna jump to three so to animate this you have to turn on the animation mode, animate editing mode, whatever the, you know that that's what it's called. But it's basically animation mode, where when you turn this guy red by clicking on it, then the changes that you make will be animated. So right now I'm gonna jump to the three minute mark, and I'm just gonna move. I'm gonna move our circle. Okay, and if you notice. You got these little, um, not sure what they call it, waypoints, but you have these this this little symbol that shows up, and this is the animation. So I'm gonna turn the animation editing mode off because we got our animation, and I'll go back. And if you watch when I hit play, it'll move the circle over. Okay. Now, if I wanted it to go slower, I could either or faster, I could either move the keyframe like this. And now when I go, since the keyframe's closer together, it'll go faster. If I wanted to move it slower, I can move the keyframe farther away. Um, or I can actually move the, the waypoint here. If I put this real close, watch, this thing will shoot right over. Because this is the animation, these two gold uh, diagonal squares. See that? 
but I, I generally like to keep the keyframes with the um, waypoints. It's just an easier way to organize it. Um, and you know, maybe we want the, we want the the circle to grow as it's moving. So to do that, it's the same idea. I'm going to turn on the animate guy, and let's see. I, I should just be able to scale it, and it should grow as it's moving. So I'm going to scale them up like that. You can see there's a different set of squares now, and these line up with the parameters panel over here. And just like the size, you see radius. The size squares line up here. So now I'm going to turn animate mode off. I'm going to go back to the beginning, hit play, and he should grow and move. You see that? Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you how to make an animated path. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a new project. Okay. And I'm going to use the spline tool to make an animated path. And so um, what I'm going to just do is click on the spline tool. Um, it says advanced outline layer. I believe that's what we want. And I'm just going to draw a path. Okay. And all I got to do is once I draw the path by just clicking, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the selection tool and it should draw the draw the um, line. Yeah. There we go. So we got a nice little line. We can edit these uh, positions if we want. Um, it does some cool curvy thing. Um, now, down here in the parameters panel, I'm going to go ahead and change some of the parameters. I want a, a thicker path, so I'm going to double click on that and then just hit plus sign. Let's go 10 pixels width. So now you can see it's, it's a wider line. Um, and, and yeah, so that's good. Um, now, what I want to have happen is I want this line to grow. And to do that, now, mind you, it took me a lot to figure out how to do this, so that, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because it's not the most intuitive program out there. You're going to go ahead and hit Alt-5, and that's going to show you these two purple icons here that are essential for making the uh, path animated. And so what I'm going to do is right-click on one of the purple lines. One has a pixel count next to it when you hover over it. The other one does not. It just has a decimal. That's the one you want to right click on and click cusp after rounded. Okay, That means everything that's after this point will be rounded off. And I'm going to go back to the beginning here. I'll, I'll bring this. So now you look whenever I drag this purple dot over it cuts off the rest of the line. So this is how we're going to animate it. I'm going to turn animate man editing mode on and let's go to a keyframe up here. I'll add a new keyframe and I'm going to jump to that keyframe and then I'll just fill in the path here and it should animate the path. So I'm going to turn animate editing mode off, go back to the beginning, deselect by clicking somewhere in the white area and then just hit play and look at that it grows a little line so that's a nice way and it's actually a great way to animate a map if you're making a geographical video so those are some of the basics of creating an animation in uh, Synfig Studio um, like I said if you want to make longer animations what you're gonna do is go ahead and click on this little white square at the top left of the canvas you click on that and you go to canvas properties and this is where you're going to change the length you click on time and then you change the duration so if I wanted to make if I wanted to make like I said a 10 minute long animation I would change this to 10 1 hit apply and that makes the end time, end time longer and hit OK and now um, I can zoom out on the timeline by holding control and pressing, um, what is it, control shift? Yes, control shift and hit the minus and you can actually make the timeline smaller. And I can see all of the 10 minutes down here at the bottom. So, so that is just about it as far as making an animation. If you're going to export an animation, you're going to go okay so say you want to create you want to export a video file you're gonna go ahead and hit file 
render all right and you're going to want to make sure that you put it in hd if you want high quality animation you set the width to 1280 and set the height to 720 and this will come out in 720p and you can up the quality if you want but i find it's fine just leaving it the way it is um now what you're going to want to do is le leave the target set to odd auto but change this at the top to synfig animation or whatever the title of your your uh your project is change it to synfig animation to dot avi okay and then you click render and that will render your animation into a video file that you can use for your programs so yeah so th this is just some of the basics of the synfig animation uh, program and I really hope it helps you to make animations uh, because it really is a great program and like I said it's not the most intuitive one out there so good luck and happy animating